without having a track man or flight scope or, or some measuring device, this is something that you can see straight away because the ball flight doesn't lie. Yeah. And that's one thing I've you know traveled with and it's helped me along the way for sure. Welcome back to the channel guys. Kerry Gray here on the range today with Brady Watt, former world number one amateur in the world and touring professional. Brady's gonna share some of his key insights which has elevated his game over the years and got him to the level that he is at now. Brady, thanks for coming along, mate. Thanks, Kerry. You guys don't wanna miss out on this one. Stay tuned. What I just want you to do is set up do you have like a certain setup for the th three ball drill? Yeah, so so if you've got set a center, so that's your center center there. Okay. And then it's just one ball back, one ball forward. And yeah. then each position you should be able to change your swing direction, which changes your flights and stuff. Mm -hmm. Which I think is important to kind of set your baseline with everything. Okay. If you can't hit like a can't hit a fade from the front ball, then you there's something out of whack. Something shifting so around. Posted, you know, you need to adjust it and like move the wheel a bit to kind of get it back to neutral. Okay, so when we're talking about like the amateur golfer, right, there's a big misconception and confusion around how to shape the ball a little bit, right? So what I want you yeah. to do is set up this three ball drill that you were just discussing for us. Yeah, so I would, I'd go center here. So center being what, relative to? Yeah, so like if your normal ball position is, you know, just forward of center. I've got a six iron here, so it's pretty much that center. Comfortable club head inside the lead yeah, foot, you'd say? Like, I wouldn't put it middle, like a little too far back or anything like that, but a, a reference point is pretty much just forward to center. Mm -hmm. And then every other club, you kind of just roll a little bit further forward just to you know, kind of help you get in the air as you lose loft and stuff like that. Okay. Um, and then you find your neutral, that's just your, your straight one here. Then I would just replace another ball kind of there and get rid of this one. And that's your, your back ball position. So for me, that's if I'm, everything is neutral and everything is on plane, yeah. I should be able to hit like a little draw that starts right and yeah. slightly moves left. Okay, so let's just talk about that a little bit more yeah. in depth. Let's just hit one from a stock ball position yeah. first. So the way we've got this set up here, we're kind of going at about the 150 around about. So I want you to stock shot for me. Yeah. Perfect. So let's assume for all purposes that that would result in, let's say a zeroed out swing path or direction. Let's say that is giving you a straight ball flight. Big simplification there, but let's say that gives you a straight ball flight. So when you move the ball position further back, so set up from relative to where you were, so the ball was in line with that black stick, let's say, yeah. then you move that one one ball further back. Explain to us what that actually encourages at the moment of impact as a point of difference relative to the first shot that you hit. So being further back, the swing path is going to meet the ball a little bit earlier than where it would. Yep. What else we got there? Yeah, so definitely hit it earlier instead of having it kind of that neutral position here. So because you're hitting it earlier, the club face is slightly open <laughs> to relation to the, the target or the baseline or anything like that. And because you're coming from a bit more of an inside path, the ball should start right and come left. Yeah. If it doesn't, there is an imbalance in what you're doing. So it's a, it's something I do during tournament weeks, kind of just start a week before like a round and stuff just to because sometimes I go too far one way mm. so my tendency is to be a little too much of a fade pattern okay so my front ball is really good yeah but I go too far sometimes so for me this is a good way of locking in each side of the goalpost so like this is my back ball draw goalpost and the front ball is the the left ball go goalpost and I kind of just move throughout all of this that's interesting right so when we're talking about let's say you're out playing a tournament week to week sometimes you're you get a little bit off balance right as in just the way that you perceive ball position um, maybe some parts of your body get a little bit tighter yep. or a little bit more flexible sometimes relative to others and the sequence of your golf swing feels off and let's say you've been traveling for sometimes a couple of days you get to a tournament in the middle of nowhere you start hitting a couple of balls on the range do you sometimes find that you would be hitting a lot more draw or fade bias than normal absolutely so i i know for like one example at the big open down at mm. 13th beach the range is the wind is in off the left and it's a windy golf course so yeah. i know all my weight shifts further left and mm -hmm. i get steeper and left on it so i try warm up super early in the morning so there's no breeze yeah and it's something i need to balance out for the next couple of events after that so it's every day you're not too worried about the flight 
on the range even though the wind is blowing so much this way it's just you kind of just trying to neutralize yourself because if you go down a rabbit hole too far then you're too far gone it turns into like a big feel that turns into a big slice or a big hook or anything like that so it's all about for me it's balancing it back and forth and you know i got so lucky with craig bishop to kind of give me a drill that's so simple that mm. you can you know implement it wherever you are mm. you kind of without having a track man or flight scope or, or some measuring device, this is something that you can see straight away because the ball flight doesn't lie. Yeah. And that's one thing I've, you know, traveled with and it's helped me along the way for sure. Yeah. Okay. So uh, when you're setting this up, let's say someone at home wants to set up a similar drill, do you set a target line out in front generally? Like we've got a bit of a T-square set up here at the moment, yeah. but in regards to if you were setting this up, would you set up a target line? Let's say we're going at the 150 or something similar and then that would be your zero line? Yeah, I've, I've done it on depending even on the range if you say you are struggling with a too much of a draw bias i'd get right on the right side of the range where the right side you can't even have really like that right side so you have to hit that front ball okay so you set up like as long as you've got three targets in the distance so for here it's like we've got the 150 the front ball would be you know the golf cart then just right of that's a tree on the side so we kind of we're trying to narrow in those little you know, reference points and stuff. So outside of being a maintenance drill and working on your swing to then maybe balance out what you're doing on that specific day, is this also what you do out on the course to shape the ball? Yeah, I think with ultimate confidence, I think some people struggle, like if they're hitting it one way on a golf course, they just go with it. Mm. I think the, the greatest players have the, you know, the confidence in themselves that they can make this adjustment during the round. Yeah. So if my first couple of iron shots and I'm trying to hit like a little fade, for example, and it turns into a little draw, mm. I will shuffle my ball position. I will feel something a little bit more of a shift that I'm trying to just balance it out a little bit so I can, you know, trust myself on the breeze, especially if it's left or right or right to left into the breeze. It just, it's all about neutralizing it over time. But most mm. of the stuff, if you do before you tee off or you know you're practicing all this stuff it it should be pretty neutral and you just go and aim at a target and hit it it's a great way to kind of feel where your default is before every round because i feel like so many players they rock up to an event uh, this is amateur golfers right obviously professionals are at a higher level but you would probably even see some pros do this i would do this if i was playing an event i'd rock up and i would go okay the ball's doing that today let's kind of run with it rather than having a baseline or a metric of how you actually then shift that ball flight to achieve a desired result yeah so i've in my practice days and I'm home at you know, Victoria playing for the Kings that I will move the ball right to left the whole day, mm. every club, just to kind of, so when I play next time, my straight shot is, or my little fade is like a straight shot. Yeah. Because the feel, the, the feel of what you're actually doing, it, it, it's not always aligned. And I think this is a great drill um, that kind of balances those three things out. And like coaching, I talk about that all the time, not necessarily specific to ball flight adjustments, but when it comes to making changes, right? The feelings that you get within your body when you're swinging, they're only suggestions. And how often, and you would get this all the time, I get this all the time, is we hit golf balls nearly every single day. And sometimes if you're not conscientious or cognizant of what you're doing, you will, let's say in two weeks time, you film yourself and you go, what the hell's my ball position doing all the way back there? Or your shoulders are twisted, little things like that. Just daily check-ins. I think that's, yeah. you know, the better the golfer is, they have always got that alignment. Like you're probably a victim as well. You look up, go past a window or a reflection, you kind of check in your like shoulders, yeah. you're kind of looking at your tilts, you're kind of looking at your grip. Like The old MasterCard ad with the guy in the elevator practicing his oh, golf correct. swing. I, mean, just, just, no, I, I just walked in before and we're looking at the, at the mirror and I'm just checking my grip. I'm like checking it's at the right strength and like, yeah. all, all the other things. It's just little pre-flight things that I, it's so important because you can go you just, I, th I think of like an, an older member who's been a member at a course for 30, 40 years. He yeah. had a great feel for a little fade and it's turned into a slice and he just keeps going for the same feel and it becomes like a, a really big issue. Mm. It's like it's having the confidence to kind of know, oh no, if I, if I wiggle the wheel back this way, I'll be able to play within the tree line instead of trying to go over the trees and all these exactly. other things. So yeah. I don't know, it just simplifies. I think having the confidence to do it while you're practicing is mm. one thing and having confidence to do it while you're actually playing in an event is a total another beast and you know we're all then under the pump where it's like ah uh, yeah i don't have that so i'll just kind of run one down there and yeah so like, yeah this is a good baseline for you know finding neutral just just one final question before we watch you hit some here would you always set up to your neutral ball and then just adjust um your whole body position like forward and back. So let's say you've got a stock neutral position. Let's say you want the ball back. Would you then move your whole body in that orientation or what would you do? Just move the ball, that's it. Just move the, the ball. The way I was taught with it was just, 
just move the ball, which just shifts you just a little bit this way. So if you're doing this on course, would you actually start with your club head in front and then move it behind? Yeah, I, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. So, so like I, I get it in a position like here, and then that's my front ball, and then shift my foot around it. Okay. So like it's that smooth from here. Let's get that on the spot there. It actually shift. Yeah, okay, okay, great. Video. You're kind of shifting into position. Back one, you kind of, you can move, like I've done that, and then you move it this way here. You're doing it off a baseline, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. You, it's really hard to do that unless you have neutral. So yeah. we start with a couple of neutral and kind of judge your flight. Like if you are trying to hit a straight, straight shot and it's too much of a draw or too much of a fade, mm. then you kind of, you kind of already know that I'm lacking in one area. Mm. And so like how I was taught with it is, Kind of explore that where you're struggling in. So yeah. for me personally, my, my back ball is something that I work on. Like you can't just hit a draw but pull it offline. It has to start online. And like start lines in, in golf is everything. Yeah, for sure. For so sure. Like if you can't start a ball online or you know that's with hitting the ball, putting everything. It, you know you kind of behind the eight ball already. Especially at your level. All right, mate. So uh, what I want you to do is I want you to start off with a neutral, and then I want to see a back ball position, and then a forward ball position right. for us as well. We can have a look at the flights here. We'll get the shot traces going, we'll see the curvature. So how would you rate your success on that one there? So that's my like, my default's a little five. Yep. So like, I know straight away that's like, okay, that's, um, I want to feel this at the moment. So yep. my straight is normally that way. Yep. So it's like, okay, I need to get a bit more of a feel. Like, I'll set it up neutral. And this is so true to just like knowing yourself as a golfer, right? Is that yeah. everyone's got their tendencies. Yeah. I fade every single drive. I draw every single iron. Yeah. Now I'm not going to go out into the golf course and all of a sudden try and hit like bomb push draws because I've got this mental baggage of hitting shots with driver that yeah. start 20 right and go 20 right. Well, I mean, we all want to be Rory, but like, you know, there's yeah. only one Rory McIlroy. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, so for me, like I hit one like that, I go, okay, so you can either have neutral and then just move the ball back. For me, I just, I set up here. Yeah. Like one club in front and go this way and just balance it out this way. And then I'll just try start one a little bit further right and move it back. On cue. Yeah. That so is. That's, that's closer to, then I just kind of, just keep moving the wheel with it all. Yeah. Yeah. That's so just. So like, if I'm being like, highly critiquing of that, it, it started too far left. Correct. So it's like, the shape's perfect, yeah. but I'm a little out of balance. 99.99% of golfers would be pretty happy with that little flight there, but yeah, being no, a pro playing for the big bucks, we need to tighten things up a little bit, no, right? I know, I mean, I'm probably over critical of what I do and my expectations are so high. And I think that's why like, my barriers are quite small, like my, my lane, lane ways with it all. Yeah. But like, if you're not, it can expand too much. That's sure. where you can kind of get into trouble. Like my 15 footer, might be a great shot to even professionals, but like I know that I've just pulled it. I yep. think it's having that self-awareness as well. Yeah. So a lot of people can be like, oh, it's a great shot and a great strike and all that stuff. It's like, no, no like, you've got to be completely honest with yourself because you can go down a way where, it, I don't know, you can kind of make excuses for something that isn't really what it is. And I, I think this is also an important conversation around effective practice, right? your intent behind every single shot, you, you've got a lot of, you're very deliberate with it, right? You know exactly where your intended start line should be relative to the ball position that you're hitting. If our baseline is, let's say 150, ball back's gonna start right, a little bit of push draw, ball forwards starting left, a little yep. bit of pull fade there. And then at the end of every shot, I did some videos with Chris Mason, who teaches a, a bunch of world number ones uh, over time out in San Diego. And a lot of what he does is based around performance, right? and he gets all his players to reflect on every single shot. And that's exactly what you're doing that right there. And a lot of players do intuitively or high level players do intuitively, even if they're not conscious of it. It's just, and then I think the, the layer behind that is that like I know my patterns, like with my, my grip, where I'm feeling it in the swing, all that stuff that's influencing that flight straight away. Like I got like getting a great coach is one thing and like them transferring their knowledge and you really understand it. Like I got so lucky with Craig. Like, yeah. Seriously, and like knowing exactly where that feel is um, is something I'm doing like subconsciously, and I kind of it floats out through all that stuff. So for me, like the one that starts a little left and goes this way, it's like okay, did it feel somewhere there? Where is my tilt through here? Where's my balance and all that stuff? So it's kind of like 
it's 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 something we just we're trying to just slowly get better over time yeah awesome man all right let's finish off with one fade shot a lot of good content here for the guys at home to take away and start to work on a little bit of maintenance exercises just to figure out where they are as a golfer perfect and there's a little bit of wind buffeting it there but we can see that ball did want to move left to right starting just left of the target awesome mate great stuff Cheers.